It's Shonda Hunt here, and today I want to do a quick demo where I show you how you can do some reflection cleanup using the median node. I'll also run through some other steps that we could do, use to um, clean up the reflection. I was trying to find some better footage to show some of these other examples on, but I couldn't find any. So we'll just go over them with this um, plate that I have here. So let's go ahead and take a look. So using the median filter, I'll just un turn off that mask for a second so we can see what the node's doing. So the median filter is pretty much going to blur your image. Now, what you do want to do is, let me just set this to the default. If you hold down um, control and you click any of your, um, like if you change the settings of your node, but you want to get back to the default, if you hold down the control key and just click on um, the options here, um, the slider options, it will always set that back to the default. So no matter where you are, if you're trying to figure out, oh, what was the default setting, you just hover your mouse over here in the slider and you hold down control and it will always reset you to the defaults. So with the median node, um, very often with sunglass reflections, we have um, sort of like a boom. This is just a highlight, but usually we'll have like this square white boom that we have to clean out. And sometimes there's some other things that we need to clean out as well. So for now, we'll just focus on a quick way to get rid of this um, highlight here. So using the medium, what you want to do is you want to just start adjusting it until whatever you want to remove starts disappearing. You don't want to go too far. Just go as far as you need to because this will start getting quite blurry and then you're actually going to have to start bringing back some things from the plate. So you don't want to take this too far if you don't have to. But of course, we're going to just mask out that. So we see it starts disappearing. These sunglasses are transparent. So we see actually using this medium filter, we're still retaining some of the pixel values because of course um, the boom squares are usually much bigger than this. They're probably like sometimes this big in the sunglasses. So it's good that we see that um, we're not changing too much more than we need to because we do want to keep most of the details from the plate. So it's taken me about here, probably even here, one of these values to fully get rid of that white highlight. So I'll just leave my median set to that. And what I then want to do is go ahead and just create a mask for that specific area. So just go in there, and draw a roto shape around that area. And then of course, I'll go ahead and just add a blur around that roto so we get a little smooth edge. And now let's take a look at how this is looking. So our blur is probably too strong. Let's look at it. See, we, we got some of that white coming back in. So you could either just adjust your blur or you could also adjust the shape of your roto just to make it a little bit big, bigger to account for the blur that we're going to put on there. And then we can see how that's looking. So we have that taken out and we didn't really touch much of many other parts of the plate, which is good. Of course, sometimes you might have to um, start adjusting other parts of the plate depending on where your boom is coming in. Actually, I'm going to bring this down a little bit more. Okay, so we have that there. And then after your medium blur, which your medium filter actually you're going to add a blur if necessary. So I'll just go ahead and detach this again. Sometimes with the median, we start getting chunky um, cleanup work and we want to kind of smooth that out with the blur. In this case, since we dialed that median in only for the area and we were very careful to not select a lot of pixels or change it too much more than we need it to, we don't really need to add the blur in for now. But let's um, actually, I'll just take away this water highlight too so that we can see maybe if we have something bigger that we need to remove. And we actually might need a different setup for this water since it's bigger. So I'll just keep this set up here for um, this little highlight. And we're just going to create a postage stamp so we can use this mask wherever we need to. So we'll use that mask for that area too, just to make sure we're only affecting that area because we're key mixing this in. So we're gonna key mix that into our plate. And if you need to do any color corrections, you can do them here. As we can see, um, this is actually blending pretty good, 
But if we wanted to do anything, again, I would hold down control to get these values set back to their default. And then if I wanted to adjust anything, I could start playing around with this. One thing that I do like to do, actually, when I'm doing color corrections and grades, I actually like to do those outside of the pipe. And I go ahead and use the merge geometric operation to do some color corrects. You'll see um, the difference. Let's just change that over to geometric first. So you'll see the difference in how um, the grade is um, behaving if it's connected in pipe here versus merged in with the geometric. So it's a little more subtle when you're bringing it in with the merged geometric. And sometimes for me, I find it a little bit easier to start um, dialing my color in once um, I'm set to this merged geometric, which we didn't really need to make any adjustments because of course it's perfect. But when, when we're, um, when I'm using this merge geometric, I just find that it helps me to, let's take a look at the color correct. It helps to um, dial in color correct adjustments a little bit better because it's not like if I make an adjustment, it's just like changing it so much, but it's changing it, you know, a little bit less. So that's usually how I um, will do my color corrections and my grades. I'll just use the merge geometric to bring them in the pipe. But for now, we know we don't need that because this is still looking pretty good even without it. These pixel values are pretty much blending in um, with what's going on with the, in his sunglasses. So we'll keep that for now. And then if you need it to, you could go ahead and sharpen that. And that's just so that it's not like you're just adding a, a blur right on top of your, um, your, your image. So let's look at our key mix. And I'm going to turn off this sharpen so you can kind of see. It's just bringing back a little bit of those details so that it's not like, oh, I just added a blur here to take that out. And of course you can adjust this sharpen as much as you need to, or as little as you need to, to start bringing back the details that you want. And let's take a look really quickly at our before and then our after. So we see we have a little bit of a bright edge here. Like, sorry, it's actually a little bit of a dark edge. But we're going to be bringing back the plate um, in the area outside of this highlight as much as we can. So for now, let's just keep moving. And if we need to come back and um, touch up anything, we will. Because we definitely want to make sure our pixels are kind of blending very well. So let's go ahead um, and show you the next thing. So if you don't know, the merge min operation and the merge max operation are actually two very good... Um, merge operations to use when you want to bring back, I'm going to disconnect this to show you when you want to bring back, um, some of the minimum, the minimum pixels, which will be the darkest pixels. And then some of the, um, the brightest pixels, which would be the maximum pixels. So when you're choosing men, let's look at what happens. The min operation will actually start bringing back some of those dark pixels, but as you can see, it's not bringing back that highlight because that's a hot pixel. So the min operation itself will start bringing back some of those darker pixels for us. So that's already helping us to bring back parts of this plate that we need. So we'll go ahead and um, I guess we'll just use this same mask, but we want the invert of it because we 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 want everything outside of the circle that we the mass that we were using we don't want to um, bring back anything um, inside of that so let's see so this is what we have now um, again usually if we were painting actually I did want to paint out um, this area this area will be a little tricky now, the, the tricky thing with this image is that these sunglasses are transparent. So a lot of times when we're doing reflection removal, it's usually on um, some opaque, like sunglasses that aren't so transparent. And then it's easier to just clean them up because you can just create whatever you want. But when you have the character's eyes peeking through the glasses you and you have different shade tones of his skin, you really have to try to find a way to retain all of that information outside of your cleanup. So if we wanted to clean up this highlight that's right over his eye, that would actually be a little bit more tricky. But let's use this same 
let me go ahead and just make this I'll make some more space let's let's use this same kind of setup to see if we can clean up that part of his the reflection that's over his eye because as we know those boom mics they just appear wherever there you know it's not it's not ever an ideal spot so let's let's just copy this and see if we were going to tackle that area how would things um, be looking now i'm just copying and pasting this of course we have to change all of our mats and, and stuff so that we're not affecting the other areas that we don't need to oh actually <laughs> let's bring in some um dots so that we can bring this in the right way here yeah so we have this and then i'm going to disconnect this mask for now so i can see what my median's doing here and actually i'll just put a dot here so that i can reconnect that easier so let's check out our median so if we wanted to remove this highlight that one's much bigger. So let's just see how far we would have to take this median to get rid of that. And as we see, everything starts getting blurry. So it's actually going to be um, a little bit difficult to start bringing back some of these areas outside of the plate. So that's what we want to see. Like what happens if we have this difficult um, cleanup job? Now, sometimes, you know, you don't necessarily need to um, take it, take out the boom all the way. It just needs to be obscured. But of course it depends on the environment that the character's in. So if they're inside, then there will be no bright highlight, but this guy's outside. So it probably would be fine if I left this little bit of highlight there, but let's just see for the sake of cleaning this up and trying to bring back as much of the plate as we can, how far we can go with this. Okay, so I, I would say that this is probably a good point to stop um, removing that highlight. And now we, of course, want to create a mask for that area so that we're only affecting that area. Let's draw that there. And then these can get really tricky depending on how much the person, the actor is moving and turning their head and things like that. You know, these cleanups we know get very tricky. So let's see. So for now, um, this is what we have now of course it's fine because like we said we could we're, we're going to control um this let's look at this sharpen we're going to bring back the areas that we're, we don't need to affect so some of this stuff isn't such a big deal it looks a little crazy now so that's what we have we basically have a blurry patch right here over that um and i don't know if it's doing as great of a job retaining some of the pixel values in the areas we do want to keep the median there though but i'm going to try to just slightly adjust this and see yeah we start getting that highlight right back because as we saw that highlight was right over his um, eyelid so let's keep it there for now and then um i was talking about the min operation which is great at bringing back some of those dark values but let's look at the max operation now with this max operation Let's disconnect this so we can see. So the max operation, as you can see, it literally just brought that highlight and also this highlight right back because it's gonna bring back those bright pixels um, in our image. Now, what we can do though, is since we still do need to keep some of his eyelid and you know we wanna keep as much of his skin tone, then we could try to create um, something that's a little more ideal to replace this reflection using um, the erode um the road operation so if you don't know if you erode in or out and then you do the opposite it will kind of bring back your image so let's look at the erode so in this erode i went out um and then in the next one i went back in the negative so i'll show you guys how to set this up if you don't know so this is a good way and let's look at the plate so this is a good way to try to start um, creating some pixels that you can bring back into your image, but that um, are still doing the job of taking away what you need to. So for this, this erode, it's looking pretty much the same as, um, as our plate. So we could try to adjust this a little more. 
So the idea, we expression link these two so that as we're adjusting one, um, the lower one will automatically adjust. And I'll just set that up if you guys want to see real quick. Let's see. I'll just show you guys. I already have this one set up. So if you have one erode, and then you just create the second one. And what you want to do is you want to hold down the control and you want to expression link these together. So once you hold down the control, you'll see this plus sign appear and you just drop that in. And now you see if I hold, turn on my expression links, there's an expression link there. And to turn on your expression links, you just hit the Alt E key on your keyboard and that'll bring them up. I usually have them turned off so I'm seeing all these green lines everywhere in my scripts. But you can also tell there's an expression based on this E that appeared here. So now we know those two are expression linked together, but we do want one to be the opposite of the other. So what we'll do with the expression link one is we'll go ahead and we will left click inside of this and we'll go ahead and choose edit expression. And now we want the expression, no matter what this value is, we want this one to be the opposite. So we just, instead of parenting it, we do, we add a negative um, symbol in, in front of it and then it will create the opposite for us. So now as we're moving this one up, that one's moving down. And when we're moving this one down, that one's moving up. So that's how we want to expression link these two together so that when we're dialing this in, we're not changing the image too much. So let's see if we can get something useful for this area um, to clean that up. So if we go this way, we see that highlight still there. So we probably want to try to go this way. And let's see if we're getting anything. So we're getting some... Let's see. No, that's going too dark. This might, this value here might work. And it's a little blocky. So then what we can do is we could just add a little bit of a blur. And we're not taking this whole image. We're just looking for the, we're just trying to create good pixels for the areas that we need. So we don't have to really worry, oh, all this looks a little crazy. We're only going to be taking out a small area part of this. So we can blur it a little bit. We don't want to go too far because then again, it will just be blurry. But let's just see if we leave it blurry for now. Let's just leave it blurry and then max that over and see what we get. Now we still want to have a mask. So I'm going to go ahead and use the same mask that I have here. Um, which one did I create for? Yeah, okay. So we created this mask for that area. Great. And then that's connected. So we'll go ahead and attach our mask to that. Now let's see how these pixels are going to blend in with um with those pixels and the reason that we don't want to just paint a patch and try it in is because these glasses are transparent and as he's moving his head if we clean plate a patch um his eyes are changing probably throughout the shot so the reason we're going this route is because we want to try to use the pixels that are in the plate so that things are happening a little bit more natural than if we had just frame held it, cleaned the patch up and tried to track that back over. That works sometimes, but in this instance where we have this much transparency, I'm sure his eyes are changing and we wanna keep as much of that change and information as we can. We have to try to come up with some creative ways to um, clean out those glasses. So let's check this out. And also, um, it's always in the limits of what can actually be done. So. If we have to clean this out, and like I said before, um, the highlight was, let's take a look. That highlight was um, right over his eye, and let's say this was just that sharp square shape of the boom light. Um, your supervisor or producer or anyone, they, they probably would know that it would be a lot more work to um, paint this out. So in an instance like this, um, it would probably also be fine just to obscure this shape so that people can't tell that it is the boom light. Maybe, you know, he has all these highlights on his face. So maybe it's a reflection from the sun or something like that. So that would be fine. I'm just trying to see if there was a way for us to bring that down without painting it out, which we might not find a solution. And if we don't, I'm going to show you how we can, um, just obscure it a little bit. And it's basically, we would just reduce these settings so that it's not so drastic. But for now, I just wanted to give it a try. 
So it's okay to like try different stuff and see if you can get something that works, you know. It's not a guarantee that you will get something that works as we see here. This is just turning black. So it's actually not really helping us that much. But this area here, that little cleanup that we did, that area is looking pretty good. But let's go ahead. I want to just take a look. So, so yeah, we probably wouldn't be able to, to completely remove that. And that's because of the transparency. So like I said, sometimes I just want to give it a try. But sometimes, you know, people, your supervisor or other creators, they'll know like, okay, it'll be kind of impossible to paint that out without, you know, sending it out for paint work. Let's just obscure that. And then if that was the case, we would do the same thing. We would, we would lower our median settings here so they're not so drastic. We just want to obscure the shape a little bit so that um, you can't tell that that's like a boom um, or, you know, the light box or whatever. So if we start just changing it a little, we see we start getting these pixels back around his eye and these pixels start blending a little bit better. So we don't have to do so much work trying to bring those back. But now we can't really tell like that reflection isn't so defined. So it might work a little bit better. And we might want to also adjust this blur. So we start getting a smoother transition there. And then we have that. So let's let's keep cycling through these. We might be able to change a few more settings. We might not need as much of a blur. And then let's look at our sharpen. And now let's take a look at our final image. So this sharpen might be too sharp. You know, this sharpen will start bringing in these dark pixels in some areas that you don't want. So you definitely have to be careful with the sharpen if you even need to sharpen anything at all. There might, you know, you might not even need the sharpen. If it's not really adding anything, you can just turn it off. And again, if you needed to color correct something, you could also do that but we don't need to so i'll just turn that off as well and now we have this so we have that kind of obscured and then we have um this highlight there completely taken away so let's look at our before then let's look at our after and we still we we drew some tight mats in there so we weren't um, affecting too much of this area outside let me take another look so we have, you know, we have some darkness here for his um, eyelid and then, you know, some darkness here, which we're losing. We're losing all that detail. So in this instance, we might be able to bring back some of that eye detail using one of these min or max operations that I showed you guys about. So um, let's go. And since we want to bring back, I'll just go ahead and copy this for that setup so that you know we're using the same operations also for this setup because these are the processes that we're trying to go through are the same so if we want to bring back some details let's connect this i think this is to the plate let's check all right so that's to the plate so let's see what happens and actually let me check I'll take a look at this okay so we have that we might actually want that as the map, but let's check it out. So we have this set to min. So it's bringing back those dark pixels. Now, if I disconnect this mask, let's see what happens. So once I take the mask away, we do see that here around his eye, um, this operation is trying as hard as it can to bring back some of these dark pixels in that area. We have that bright highlight. So the opera, and if you notice, I don't even have a mask input here. Um, but since it's only looking for um, the minimum pixels between A, which is this, and then our plate, um, the only change we made is in this area, which is masked off. So in this instance, we don't even need to create a mask because um, the merge operation is only looking for the pixels that are um, different. And then it's choosing the, the min pixels, lo the lowest value pixels. So we see that does help so we have a little more detail coming back in there we we might actually want to use that let's see if we just blur the plate a tiny bit will that blend in a little bit better let's check so we get a little detail back but you know this is you know we get a little detail back but not and we might actually want to create a separate blur for this bottom area than we would for that eye area so that we can bring back those pixels a little bit and then also um, um, bring 
bring back these pixels a little smoother too so I'll just create a blur just to and then I'll create a mask so we can just do that real quick so we have this here and let's choose this mask we'll just draw a big shape around here and then let's blur this a little bit okay so that's a little smoother now we all I see is happening which you have to kind of pay attention uh, these pixels are also changing at the top, which we don't want because we don't want to change too much of the plate. So we just adjust this a little bit. And we could use this or we could just bring the plate back in a different way. So I don't know if I, I guess it's helping a little tiny bit. So for now, let's just leave it, but I'm going to do a little bit more work later down. So let's see. So for now we have this. Okay. So let's see where we started. We started here and now this is where we are. So this isn't looking too bad for simply obscuring the boom or the highlight and then kind of removing that highlight completely. And actually, once you add some grain on here, it will help out with the areas that are blurred anyway. So I think this might be fine. Now, let's see what else we have set up here. So add the now some of these notes we don't need necessarily. I'm using a frame where you can't see the sky. So um, I showed you the min operation. So let's let's see about this is the max operation. And I was telling you how you could try to create something um, a little bit smoother to go over that area. Now, you don't want it to be the boom that was there or the highlight that was there, but you could still make it some sort of highlight that's obscured that looks a little bit more natural. So let's continue with that process. So I'll adjust this erode here and see if I can get something, let's see, that looks a little more obscured. Okay, so this is kind of looking the same, but... Um, and then if we look at this blur that we have, we can see if we want to keep any of this. It looks like there's a little bit more detail coming back in his eye. So let's see, we might want to use this, but I think we don't want it to be so rigid. Let's see if we can move a little more pixels around to get this to be a little softer. Um, I think this this is looking good. Oh, actually, this is less. We're not adjusting it too much here. So let's see if we go here. Let's see. I think maybe we'll try something like this. And let's turn that blur off so we can see. Without the blur, now we can also probably bring this blur down. But we'll see how it's looking. <laughs> and what's this mask connected to? Okay, so this mask is connected there. So this is max. So this is gonna bring back the brightest pixels. Now let's see, did we bring back too much? Because it looks like we might have. If we were trying to remove, make that shape look different. Yeah, it's starting to look a little bit more of the same. But we do get some details back. So let's see, we can create a different mask for this. For this one, I'm just gonna create a mask around some areas that I wanna keep. So I think this is a nice area to keep and then actually probably keep some of this without touching that highlight. Oh, actually, we wanna go around the other way. Let's see how I can, I think I mean, I'll just keep some of this. All right, let's see if we keep a little bit of this and then what we'll do is, um, We'll, we'll adjust some of our erode settings, our dilated erode settings um, a little bit more to see how it's acting. Okay, so we have this and let's see how much is helping our overall image. So it's helping um, a little bit. It's still a little bit bright. So let me see if we want to adjust this blur a little more to give it a, make it a little sharper. And then we might want to see if we can change some of these settings now that we have everything set up to kind of obscure it a little bit more. Yeah, so you just want to kind of move stuff around until you get something that you think is working. Um, and let's look at that again. 
So I think that separation does help to bring his eye back a little bit better. Um, and then we're, of course, bringing back some of those pixels overall from the plate. So again, this max operation is only going to focus on the um, the brightest pixels and, and you can use a mask to kind of limit even what pixels you're going to use for your brightest pixels. Um, so I do like that. Let me see if I adjust this mix. I think it's fine to have a little bit of a highlight because like we said, he has these highlights all over his face. We just want to change it. And overall, um, like I said, you can just obscure that boom. So let me, I think let's try to, let's try to adjust this median here because maybe we could even dial this back a little bit. Yeah, maybe like something like that where it's still a little bit hot, but it's not as defined. And now let's take a look at our overall before and after. So I think for um, overall, I think this is looking good. Let's take a look at that. So we have some stuff taken out and we obscured this highlight a little bit so that it's not so defined. And then we still keep his eye detail. We can still see his eye in there. So that's good overall. Um, and now what I what I would do too is if I wanted to bring back some of those darks for his eye, which we might not need. Let's see. I'm going to also um, take away this mask so we can see if we add the men again over his eye. So it's the same as we did um, up at the top when we when we add it, when we're adding in the men, um, if we're trying to keep a little bit more of those uh, edges around his eye, you can see it's coming in there. But again, it's still too sharp and it's a little bit out of place because um, we still have this highlight here. But let's see if we change this operation to sometimes I just play around with these operations. So let's see if we change it to average. We're getting back too much. Um, if we change it to geometric, let's see what happens. Actually, and then let's change it back to men. Let's see what happens if we do men. Okay, men is a little crunchy. Geometric might actually, let's see. Is it starting to look back too much like the same? Let's check. One, two, let's check. It's not as bright, but that geometric is helping a little bit in some of those dark areas. So let's see if I do merge geometric, we'll go ahead and... um attach this here and then we'll use that as our min and see if that helps let's change this to min and check this out might help it might not let's see if it's a little bit of a smoother min operation so if I connect it here let's see how it's looking so it's a little sharper there when it's connected directly to the plate but then if we use this merge geometric it's actually a little softer so we we can get a little bit of a softer um, smoother transition without even blurring it so that actually helps. Let's see. And I wonder, where did we bring that eye back in before? <laughs> Was that here? I wonder if we <clears throat> also use that same logic of using the merge geometric instead of bringing that um, in. Will it... So if we'll, we'll try to do the same thing where we connect, we're, we bring in the, we connect the merge geometric to the plate and then we're bringing um, that that um, operation mend over our plate to bring back some of those darks and maybe it won't be so sharp that we don't even need to use that blur that we used at the top. So let's go ahead and see how it's looking. I don't know if it's going to work, but you know, these blurs, I try to find ways to bring stuff back. When you're using these operations, the merge, min, geometric, it's actually only selecting pixels that are, you know, different in the different ways that the operation is calling for them. So sometimes it's good to use these different operations because you don't have to draw a lot of mask. Um, it's only going to change the pixels in the area, you know, that you you know if you create you know a mask up here and it's already limited then when you're using some operations below that it's only going to call for those pixels that are different so as we saw when there's no mask even connected to this min even though the min is um not connected to a mask it's only changing that area so let's go ahead though and keep moving forward i just want to 
see if we, we change this to merge geometric. I think we want to bring in our plate, right? We want to bring our plate in from the pipe. So let's just switch those around. And let's see what we have here. Now let's look at the plate though and see how different this is. So yeah, we see here again, um, that's the plate and this is what we have with the merge geometric. Now let's look at our, our key mix without the merge geometric. So see, it's kind of blurry. And then if we use the merge geometric operation um, with that, it bring it keeps it um, the highlight taken away a little bit, but it's also still bringing back in some detail. So I was... And then let's mend that back in. So now we, and you can double up these operations actually. So let's just add another mend here. You can actually just keep doubling this up if you want to see if you can get something um, that's still going to work. And this is like making little small fine, pic, fine per pixel adjustments. Let's look at our first mend versus our second. So these two actually aren't that different. So the in terms of doubling it up, we're not gonna see a big difference here. But now we have, let's look at what we have. Uh, so we have a little bit of that eye detail. It helps probably just tie that eye in a little bit better. Um, and again, we didn't even have to start using these um, blur, these blur nodes. And then we um, we have, we brought a little more back using these um, erodes, you know, just trying to change the shape a little bit. So that's, uh, these erodes are good for kind of just changing that shape up. And then, you know, they get too blocky, so you might need to blur it a little bit. And then you can max that in. And again, the max is just going to bring in the brightest pixels, so it's not going to bring in the darkest ones. And then, um, yeah, and then we try to bring back a little bit more of that eye. So once we do all that, you know, and let's take a look at this build because I want you to pay attention to how I'm just using some different math operations to kind of um, remove this highlight. And I didn't use any roto paint nodes. All I used was some mask inputs, which are much faster. You know, you can just go through your whole shot. This shot's 400 frames, so I'll, I won't be doing that today. But you could just go through and you could just draw some roto shapes around the, the areas that you need to adjust. And then you can just use a few different um, merge operations and, you know, median, blur, sharpen. And you could just start in, you know, the erode and you just start manipulating your image. And the reason that I'm always trying to find ways to manipulate my image, um, like I could go in and paint, but then, you know, I'm bringing something into the plate. Like I'm trying to take something from the plate and create something new. I like just using different nodes and operations because those nodes will just manipulate the pixels that are already in the plate. So, um, I'm not really changing too much. You know, I'm just trying to manipulate some of the pixels that are in the plate to get um, the result that I need without having to kind of paint something and track something and, you know, bring that back in. All I would have to do is, as far as tracking, all I would have to do is just um, have some roto shapes that are um, keyframe throughout the whole shot. I don't have to try to do anything else. And all of these adjustments will just work throughout the entire shot and you don't have to worry too much about, you know, your track or anything. Um, we're blending back, we're blending things back in and we're also blending our roto. So you won't have any sort of like popping or issues like that. And we're using these pixels that are already in the plate to give us the result that we need. So let's, let's just take a quick look at our before and after. So again, you know, we use this median blur and sharpen setup again if you needed to color correct you could color correct in pipe but like i said i like to use the merge geometric and then you would key max that in and then if you wanted to bring back some of your darks you could mend those in from the plate so it will take the dark values from the plate and bring them back in on top of your image only in the areas that you have masked out in your key mix so you don't have to worry about creating any more mask and as you can see I just use postage stamps to keep um, connecting my mats to each other. And then if I need the, the invert, I just go ahead and, you know, choose the invert um, operation as opposed to just trying to create another mask so we don't have to do too much work. So then we have, um, we have those darks brought back and then we just keep going through and we try to keep adjusting it as much as we need to, but also keep bringing back as much as we can as we're adjusting so we're not losing too much information 
And as you can see in the end, let's just look at the before and the after. So we have something that's probably going to work. And since we brought that highlight down and obscured it a little bit, um, if that was like a rectangular boom shape, we could probably keep it. But we also don't have to worry too much about losing any of this image that is transparent. And of course, like I said, that's going to change throughout the shot. Let's just play this a little bit. So that reflection is going to start moving around and all you would need to do. So let's go ahead. I'm going to. I'm going to just show you guys how simple it would be to just keep following along with that. Um, let's see where our little shape. So we have one little shape for the highlight. So let's we just move this roto node around. And then we would also want to bring this roto with us. And then we didn't even need this one, so we can delete that. And what else? We have one more roto. And that one was for, let's check. Um, that was for that highlight area so we'll just bring that back over too and let's see how well this um this cleanup is translating for us so let's now go back to the before and the after and we see just by moving that roto shape we still have the pixels are still because we were using the pixels from the plate we still have this clean nice smooth transition without having to track anything so this is a very cool way and workflow to do some reflection cleanup. Um, it's very common. I know we all have to do it. And usually we would try to paint it out, but there's not always times where we can paint it out. You know, we have to keep all of these values and all of the changes in the pixels. And then we also have to keep his eye intact, which is, um, you know, covered by a, a highlight the entire time. So instead of sending this out for someone to paint it and clean it up, you know, we just want to make sure people aren't seeing, okay, there's a big square boom here. Um, what can we do to just obscure that or make it less noticeable? And this is just a cool, quick way to get that done. All right, guys. So I hope you like this demo and I will actually, let's just go through one last quick thing. One thing I always do when I'm doing cleanup work, I have a backdrop here labeled bring back plate because I like to always make sure I'm bringing my plate back in the areas that I didn't adjust. And in that case, I would simply create a roto node, you know, around my cleanup work. So I know that I was cleaning up or you could even use these um, rotos that you already have set up for his eyes. But for now, I'm just going to do this quick little. So that's my I know I, I changed that area. So I want that to stay different. But what I don't want to happen is. I don't want my plate to change outside of that shape. So I just usually have a bring back. I put it at the end of my script and then I'm going to bring the plate back. Let's take a look at this and all the areas outside of that. So this is a way to just always make sure. And again, you could just connect all of the mats that you already have in your plate. You can merge them together and use the invert of them here so that you're only um, bringing back exactly what you didn't change or you could just draw a rough garbage mat but this is a good way and a good um habit to make sure that you are always bringing your plate back at the end of your um at the end of your script and then making sure you're not changing too much outside of the plate and now that is the end of this demo so i hope you guys um like this demo if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments and um, i'll get back to you